Welcome to the Three Haunted Podcast, where we bring you all things horror, supernatural, folklore, mythology, and all things that go bump in the night. Hey guys, this is your co-host Ashley Lunar Goddess, guerrilla girl filmmaker and horror-loving cinephile. I'm just your average pun-making swearwolf that loves to explore the spookier things in life. Hey everybody, I'm John Thomas, paranormal investigator, super smartass, and film lover extraordinaire. Alright, here we go. I'm going to record and it's going to be a one take. I have a feeling. (laughs) I never do it in one take. Okay, here we go. What's up goals, gals, and all you players out there? Well, video game players that is. Join us and our special guest as we jump into the world of horror video games. Make sure you're stocked up on that ammo, and let's press start to begin. But first, a word from our network sponsor. Are you looking for more awesome podcasts? Head on over to withoutyourhead.com for access to the Without Your Head podcast network, where you'll find a variety of podcasts sure to keep you entertained and coming back for more. Okay, bring us back, John. All right, welcome back, everybody. Tonight, we are discussing the horror video games, as Ashley said, but we also have a very special guest with us, Mike Vaughn, talented film and voice over actor and host of Cyber News. Welcome, gorgeous Mike. <laughs> what? Oh my god. Oh, good. Yeah, I see you got my notes on how to introduce me. Mm. Absolutely. Oh my god, you're so funny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I really am. Mm. Not everybody can see out there all our listeners, but oh my gosh. Yeah. Mike has the dreamiest oh, eyes. Stop. <laughs> they sparkle blue. They're green. Aww. No, I know you're like, yeah, you well, see, you, you missed the notes. You missed the third bullet. I'm colorblind. <laughs> <laughs> Excuses. <laughs> and calling me gorgeous, I'd also suggest you might be blind, not just color. Oh. Totally. Well, just blind. <laughs> this podcast is in Braille, right? <laughs> feel it out. Oh, my God. Just feel Still it out. out. Well, uh, see, that could have so many different meanings there. That's what she said. <laughs> Could you imagine if I told listeners that, hey, guys, just feel, feel it, out. it out with me. Reach in. Reach in through your headphones. Feel us. Feel us. Oh, dear. <laughs> there might be a surprise on the other end. Reach out and touch me. And we also have the amazing Lila. Hello, Lila. Hello. Thanks for having me back. I'm fine with just staying past the headphones, so... <laughs> Oh, She's like, don't touch me don't at all. Me. Do not reach through anything. Nope. <laughs> Take your 10-foot bubble and just <laughs> multiply it times three. That's as close as anybody needs to get. Except if you're playing a horror video game, they get way too, too close. close. Oh, absolutely. What a good segue, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. It's like I've done this a time or two. 40-plus <laughs> episodes. So, yeah. speak. I mean, for real. But speaking of horror video games, who here has actually played a horror video game? All of us. I see all hands going up. Keep your hand up if you've also done voice work for a horror video game. Well, that's not fair. (laughs) Oh, one hand is still up, and that's Mike. Mike, which horror video games have you done uh, voice work for? I mean, some games are so bad, they're just horror, just in general. Like, they're just so <laughs> they're just bad. horrible. Yeah. I agree. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, the most recent one that I know about is Back for Blood. Um, so that was... Okay. I don't. You guys consider that horror or gore? I call it a pain in the ass. That one's hard. That's hard? It's, hard. it's a hard game, man. Is oh. it? I, What's so I hard about it? I don't know. It's just... They've definitely toughened it up. Like, I know yeah. uh, it's from the creators that did Left 4 Dead, which I absolutely yep. love those games. Those games were amazing and fun and fun to have a couch co-op. But I'm not big on the online thing. And some of those players, man, I tell you, they just leave you for dead. They don't care. Yeah. 
I would call it a horror. I mean, they're even playing on horror with, I mean, they've got monsters, but also they play on horror titles. They're, one of their expansion packs is Children of the Worm instead of Children <laughs> of the Corn. So, like, they're playing on the horror theme. So, I would say, yeah, it's a horror. Yeah, it's, you can't, you can't call them zombies, as I found out in the session. They're yes. called, uh, what are they called again? The, the, the Revenant. The, what are they? the Ridden. Ridden, Something the Ridden. Like yeah. yeah, they're not zombies. They're not zombies. Not these but come ones, on, no. it's the it's it's the zombie zombie genre, it's which zombie. you know is horror. <laughs> yes. Some some regards. It's the undead yes. or the return from yes. the dead, the resurrected, the Something unalive, like that. the ridden. Yeah, and back for blood. What are they like? Are is it like infection or what is it? Yeah, yeah, it was infection and some vague. They're not going to tell you. So during the session, they they left a lot to the imagination. They didn't give me too much other than don't call them zombies. Here's what this one looks like. Here's probably what happened to him, her, it, whatever. And here's what you got to do. And I think I kind of passed through maybe four to six different sort of types of ridden. And so it was just like my higher range to my lower range and different, I guess, issues (laughs) issues <laughs> with each one <laughs> and then all the different issues. actions and then all the different actions that they would do and so they're just kind of barking commands at me with a little spreadsheet in front of me that's you know a general guide but it's like okay no he's jumping 10 feet and then you <laughs> you know and you you just do that and <laughs> that was way too good <laughs> it's it's all improv it's all improv and you just sort of physicalize it as best you can without making you know noise other than your your head and then whatever they tell you, you just sort of imagine it and do it. It's exactly the same as my Nintendo job that I had years ago. Same thing. They tell you what he's doing. You just make it up. Good luck. That's it. What was your Nintendo job? Uh, I was the voice of Iggy and Ludwig. I did one session in, I think, 2007 or 2008. And that's the only session I ever mm-hmm. did. And I've got, I think, I don't know, is it 12 or 19 credits for the, from them? There yeah. was a lot. Just from that session. I looked session. him up. I, I had you. I looked him up. But like. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. It's really weird. I get, I get credited and I never did the work and I, other than the one original session. And I'm just like, how are they making, how are they making this much out of three hours of. <laughs> like, it's all I did. I don't know how they. That's all, all I did. I did. <laughs> Oddly, like, what the fuck? Oddly enough, your zombie sounds very similar <laughs> to. Oh, it's the same thing. Like yeah, 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 yeah. It's the yeah, same yeah, yeah. Thing. Iggy just wants to eat your throat. That's that's all it is. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, just take okay, Iggy and make him an asshole versus your brain. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> is Iggy already an asshole? Pretty much. Well, he's a he's a party fun guy asshole. Yeah. He's a misunderstood there asshole. You go. He just wants to have fun. He just wants to have fun. And if you suffer some pain along the way, eh, too bad. That's fun for him too. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Like the Back for Blood has a lot of little bitty like horror references in there for the horror movie lovers like you have the children of the worm but you also have like there's a um whatever they're called i'm gonna call it a zombie um there's a zombie character that has pants that are uh red and green stripes yeah like freddy krueger fun fact a lot of people think his sweater is like red and brown it's not it's red and green yo that's right that's right it's just like a dark green yeah it's a dark green so yeah didn't Nightmare on M Street sort of pass over the holiday season time? Maybe am I wrong about that? <laughs> Merry Christmas. Like Christmas. The sweater? first one? I don't. I don't think the no? first one okay. was. Okay, maybe I'm wrong. No. I thought it sort of. But maybe it was Christmas time when he was murdered. Oh, maybe. maybe. Like burned alive. I, I don't Merry know. Merry Christmas, Freddy. He was killed for that shitty Christmas sweater. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so note to self: don't wear That's shitty Christmas good. sweaters because you might be set on fire. No ugly Christmas sweaters. Check. <laughs> Got it. But then you might come back with really cool killer claws. Maybe. So, maybe. You know, maybe. Side note. Mind. Side note. I do know. have a Christmas sweater, and it's too deer humping, and I wear it on every family <laughs> Christmas sweater Hell I can yeah. I can manage. Oh my yeah. god. <laughs> yeah. Why the two deer it's humping? Subtle. Like two it's reindeer subtle. Yeah, it's two. It's a reindeer on mounting another reindeer, and it's kind of small, and you can't always really see it. And yeah. Perfect. I feel like there's got to be a joke about that to be made at some point, like some kind of fun pun with a punchline. I don't know. It'll come to me, but until then, oh dear. Fun pun. Oh um, dear. Fun. Oh dear. Fun pun. Okay. So then that's back for blood, which seems fun. Yep. What horror video games have you guys played? Oh. You, you, yeah, you guys first. You guys first, because I'm going to beat all of you. 
I yeah, am the most are. terrifying one. I'll, you are. I will say. I'm going to beat all. He's so cocky. <laughs> I will beat all of you. In, in all of this, I realize my faults. I don't have the most experience playing horror games, but I am part of like the group of people who will watch people play horror games online. All right. What was the scariest one you watched then? Yeah. What's the scariest one you watched? Oof, okay. <laughs> I'm going to have to think on that one. Um, but in terms of like games that I have played, Left 4 Dead was a big one. Um, mm. Love that one. I think like both of them. One and yeah, two. one and two. One is better. Let's be real. But two is good as well. Um, Evil Within was a good one. Yeah. Um, and let's see, Slender Man, Changing Pace. Um, I feel like there's different genres within like horror video games and like. Slender Man and Evil Within don't necessarily fall on the same platform, but they're kind of fun to like. They're fun for different things. And it's actually funny because before she started playing the Evil Within, she would watch me play it. And she was obviously younger because that game's kind of old. It would scare the shit out of me. You got things crawling at you with like big boxes on their heads and stuff. And then one night she was stayed the night. Like I said, she was little. She was over for the weekend. And um, I didn't know she went into the kitchen before I did. And I had turned the corner, and all of a sudden, there she was. And we had just gotten done playing this game. And I almost <laughs> screamed like a little girl because she scared the shit out of me. And she didn't even mean to. So I don't even remember this. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yes, nice. yes. Oh, my gosh. Okay, what about you, Johnny John? Like Lila, Left 4 Dead, obviously The Evil Within. I've tried playing Slender. That game kind of got to me. Um, I've played The Blair Witch, and this is nothing on The Blair Witch game, but I fell asleep because I was really tired. And I ended up somehow in a glitch. Like, I'm in between two rocks, and I can't get out now, so I have to start the game over, (laughs) which sucks because... I wasn't very far, but it's still, it was like, oh, come on, I had gotten this far. But Silent Hill was a good one. Of course, the Resident Evil games, absolutely amazing. Two is my favorite, with Village being a close second. I didn't like Seven. Seven irritated me. It was cool. It was creepy. It brought back the creep factor. But uh, after you beat the game, or beat one part of the game, you go to a different and a whole other thing, and it was just, I didn't like that. So... (laughs) I'm sure there's more, and I'm sure I'll remember once once Mike starts saying his. So, <laughs> Mike's got a lot. I don't have a lot. I don't have a lot. You you're up oh. though, Ashley. What's yours? Oh, am I? Yeah. Um. Okay. So, I would say my top favorite ones were Resident Evil. I don't remember which one it was though. Um. I know what age I was, but I don't remember which one it was. I think we did the timeline, and it was I believe two. But, um, cause it would have been like 2004, 2003, 2004. So I think that's Resident Evil 2. What we used to do, we get together as a group and we'd turn off all the lights and we'd like, my friend had this huge gaming TV and we would just turn it on, have the sound system way up. And then we would take turns just playing these games. And obviously like it was maybe liquid you know libations at play and so you know the more you drink and the more you're playing this horror game in the dark like people would get so freaked out and I remember one night we were playing Resident Evil and nobody wanted to leave the room to go to the restroom because they were so <laughs> on, like on edge that they're just like no I'm good let's all stay in the same room okay oh, <laughs> and and I remember at some point like it all ends right like we're all done for the night and I'm like oh shit I have to drive home, and it's like three a.m. and it's dark out. I, I don't, I don't want to drive home oh in the dark. God, that's funny. <laughs> the, so that game got to, especially that one, and especially Silent Hill. Yeah. But to me, okay, I'm weird. Silent Hill was scary, but to me, Silent Hill was also sexy. Mm. So there was something about like the fog and the pyramid head, like. I was like, oh, there's something strangely darkly erotic about this, and I'm I'm here for it. So I'm weird. I also love Hellraiser and think it's darkly erotic. So what does that say about me? Oh my god, that's great. I have problems. That's great. <laughs> I have a a quick fun fact about the fog in Silent Hill. So yes, they had it in the game for creep factor, but they also had it in there to hide some of their shitty graphics. Oh, sneaky. That way they didn't have to improve it on it. Yeah, out. it worked really good. Sneaky. 
Yes. And you know what's funny is that the one thing that they did to hide their fuck ups is the one one of the big things that people have an association with the game now. So like if it's a foggy morning, I'll see people hashtag Silent Hill. Uh, I've done it. Take the pictures of like foggy <laughs> yeah, foggy days and they're like hashtag Silent Hill and it's like you hear the and it's yeah. So it's a full vibe. So it's kinda of funny it's they're they're fitting. whoops, we gotta cover our mess ups. Yeah, is very appropriate to the game and one of the identifiers yeah, yeah. or associations, I yeah. guess. All right, Mike, you're up. All right, so just a quick rundown of games that, like, affected me. Uh, Alien, because I'm a little older, so, like, I had time to play games before the first kid, and then no time to play games after that. So you'll have to pardon my dated old references. It's my same apology to anybody I have to act with or do improv with. I'm sorry. All my references are very old. Um, so Alien, Alien Resurrection affected me. Um, I was in I was in a game and I saw clips of it. And it, it did affect me because I remember blacking out doing the lines. And that was, um, oh, my God, what was it? Oh, fuck. It was a Kinect game. You remember when Xbox had Kinect? Oh, yeah. And you had to physically, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Had yeah. physically punch and all that. Uh-huh. Rise of Nightmares. I was in that, so that had some creepy moments to it. But did you say you blacked? I blacked out. out. Yeah. So I, so my character Max uh, got chopped in the head at the very end, and I just went there fully. And so I was just like, I expelled all the oxygen out of my head, my everything. I just, I went for it. Oh my! And gosh. I went out, and next thing I know, I'm like, <laughs> I hit the back back of the studio wall and grabbed it. Wow. And that's not the only time I've done that. I've done that in this booth right back here. <laughs> Um, screaming auditions, monsters, whatever. I and you always have to do deaths at the very end, all the different. Uh, 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 and I took one so big, I woke up on the floor, and I was like, oh, wow. "What the fuck just happened?" That's why it's padded. That's why it's got these soft <laughs> panels all over it. So I had a uh, Xbox, uh, just the regular old Xbox, the first one that came out. I think, yeah, the first one that came, the first one that came out. And uh, I would have, uh, my family was, my mom and dad were there for some reason helping me with the house. But every Sunday night, I'd have family guy night. And my neighbor would come over, or friends would come over, and um, I would drink too much. They would get high too much, and we would watch family guy and laugh our ass off. And then some people would leave, some people would stay, and we'd keep going. We'd play the Xbox. So we played SSX Tricky. We played Tony Hawk. We played a lot of skateboarding and snowboarding games. But then I was like, let's try something different. And I put in the old Doom. It was just oh, Doom, yeah. and it came in a metal box. You guys remember that? I yes. think I still have it. Uh-huh. So, oh my God. You would think shoot 'em up gore fest. <laughs> Fuck no. There's a part <laughs> where you go down into the caves and the whole thing, and it's dark. And I had surround sound. So I had the whole 5 <laughs> 1 perfectly set up. I had a new HD TV, I had the whole thing. I hit this one part with skulls and stuff, and s- demon came up. I ah! jumped up. My parents jumped up. My friends jumped up. Everybody's just like, ah, it's too much. Turn it off. Turn it off. Turn it off. We're done. We're done. <laughs> so that absolutely affected everybody into this game. That is like the one I'm like, if you get to the right section of that, you will be terrified out of your mind because it's surprisingly empty and solo. Like you really do feel alone when you're venturing down in there it freaks you out and there are moments in fallout 4 where i'm like oh you got to be kidding me this is this is scaring the crap out of me this is too much yeah oh wow that's yeah funny. yeah 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 so now see so you under you understand the group dynamic of playing games cuz then you're all in it together and there's something about that yeah. right like oh yeah because if more than one person starts to get scared, it's like that energy starts to kind of transfer to you and then you're on edge and then that anxiety spreads so then everybody collectively is just like, oh, fuck. And it's like saying, you know, the horror movies where like seven people are about to like throw the other one in front so they don't die and it's, oh my gosh, it's funny. And I remember um, I have a PlayStation 4 now and one of our friend's daughters was down in the basement playing it with her friend and she downloaded this game. I don't, I don't know if it cost, I don't think it cost any money and I forget what it's called, but basically you cannot shoot, punch, kill, you can't do anything bad in this game, but basically you're walking around um, an old insane asylum 
and you're just you see these ghosts and all that stuff. Dude, again, I'm like I'm like wetting my pants again. I'm like, what the fuck? How is this so scary? It was really scary. I wish I could remember the name. It was a downloadable um, on PS4. What was the point of it? Uh, you have to solve solve how people died, you know, and oh. whatever. Yeah, yeah, going through the Saint Asylum, and that that stuff will freak me out. One of the first jobs I did in LA was for a film uh, called Zombie Strippers. So it was like, it was literally my first or second week in LA and they had, they wanted background extras and it was starring Jenna Jameson and it's going to take place in a strip club. And so I'm like, yeah, I'm going, let's go. So, you know, you're, you're paying me to go. Oh, okay. I was going to pay you. All right. So I go, it's not at a strip club. It's at that fucked up, haunted, abandoned hospital in East LA. The vibe is like horrifying. It is, you go down the basement, you're just like, I don't want to be here. This is messed up. Something's up. Something's off. So they have set up a fake strip club in one of the upper rooms, in one of the bigger like halls. I think maybe it was the cafeteria or something. So they set this whole thing up. The director was a complete asshole, rude to everybody. The porn stars didn't want to do the work, so we're all waiting around. It was just a dumb shit show. But during lunch break in the middle of the night, we look over and there's Robert England. And he's just like, hey, guys, hey. And we're like, oh, that was cool. All right, yeah, yeah, that was fun. But the vibe of that building was so messed up. And apparently they use it for all kinds of, you know, low-budget horror stuff and all that. And you don't have to do any art direction. It's just waiting for you. The vibe, that vibe you're talking about, it's just built in. It's like, oh, God, this is weird. This is so painful. Yeah. So at the end of that gig, they're like, okay, you're scheduled for tomorrow. I go, no, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I saw Jenna Jameson on stage. I wasn't I wasn't blown away. I'm like, no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm going home. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's too funny. So you didn't do the zombie strippers gig then? I did. I was. I did one night. I did. Oh, I did. did. I did you one did night too. as background in the strip club. I'm just throwing ones at the at the oh. strippers, but I never came back. Yeah. But my uncle saw me in it. Like he's like he's like, did you do did you do the zombie strippers thing? I'm pretty sure I saw you there throwing money. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I'd be like, wait, why are you watching that? <laughs> My uncle will watch. He he used to he used to watch anything for free on IMDb before before anybody knew about it, and it was free on IMDb for many. I think it still is for many years. It was really funny. So I guess Robert England was just like a producer on it or something. He didn't. I don't think he acted in it. <laughs> That's so weird. Could be wrong. <laughs> yeah. So. They're, um, because a lot of these games that people play, like they're full experiences and lots of levels and it takes a while. So they cost like 80 bucks or, you know, less or more, but about there. And so I was curious, like, are there horror video games online other than what is it? Streamlab or stream? What is it called? Stream code? Streamwire? I can't remember. You sent Anyways, me something. Whatever yeah. that gaming site is. Yeah, but I was like, I wonder if there's just free ones online, horror ones. So I found this website that has, uh, it's like crazygames.com uh, yeah. or something, but they have a whole subgenre of horror. And I was like, well, let me try, try a few. I'm just curious. And one of them, for being a free game, was insane. It was good, and I could see it being, like, on the, you know, right setting, a big screen, and, like, fully, you know, sound on. It could really fuck with you. It seems like whoever created it had a lot of love for different horror elements, because one of the things, like, creatures in there looks like a face hugger from Aliens. It's like a spider on the ground, but Ooh. then it would jump in your face, come back down, jump in your face. Um, but then you're also trying to keep an eye out for these like werewolf zombie things and shoot those. But then there's also regular zombies and you're shooting those. But then there's also humans that are bad that are creating the zombies and the whatever and you're shooting them and it's like a free for all. It took me a minute, though, to figure out how to get the spiders because those are the things that kept killing me. And so, uh, like, not the people, not the zombies, not the werewolves. It was it was the face huggers. And I'm like, yeah, of course. Um, I figured out. I think I shot my own foot at something, <laughs> trying to get them. Because I'm like, okay, if I point the gun down and shoot, I'll get it when it lands. But it shot my foot. And I only know because I, I hit the shoot or, like, you know, I, I pulled the, the – hit the trigger button. And then I saw my health, like, the screen go red. And then the health went down. I'm like, oh, fuck. Did I just do that to myself? <laughs> You literally shot yourself in the foot. 
I shot myself at the foot. And I was like, I thought games are supposed to have, like, you can't hurt yourself oh, no. other than, no, you know. No. But apparently you can because I shot my own foot. And I was like, okay, well, I got to time that better because I literally just, like, this spider face hugger is going to kill me. Oh, that's funny. And you didn't find you didn't find all those different genres mashed into one game to be too much? Um, Not once I started getting the hang of it. I think the first few okay. times, well, I died a lot. <laughs> I still keep dying. But like the first, I would say three or four times I died, it, it did feel overwhelming because I'm still trying to figure out the lay of the land. And so to figure out, okay, there's another creature, there's another, you know, bad guy villain. Um, it did feel a little much at first. But once I got the hang of, okay. Because yeah. I kind of clumped the zombie werewolf bad guys as one. You know, they, they, they're they human-like, yeah. and I can shoot them, and they die. It's like, okay, like shoot them in the head, they're gone. But then, uh, I think it's the spider things, the face huggers that threw me off, because I'm just like, what the fuck is this? Where'd this, like, I gotta look high and look low? Like, it's just, <laughs> and you don't know they're there, uh, because this, it's very dark, right? Like, it's a typical horror game where the mm. lighting isn't super bright, like you're in a fluorescent building. It's in outer space, by the way. Um and on a ship. And so it's just like, you get the hang of that. And then it's like, all of a sudden, this thing's jumping in your face. It's like, where did that come from? Oh my gosh, what is that? That's a, oh, that I gotta look ho- low, look high. And so I'm just like shooting everywhere at some point because I'm like, I don't know where it is. So I'm just gonna start shooting everywhere and hope whatever's coming at me, I got. I think to your point though, maybe they could introduce them a little slower. Like, maybe one level <laughs> yeah. has a creature. Another Transition, level, right? Like, yeah, but, like, having them yeah. all, like, you don't know if you're going to turn a corner. Because sometimes, like, I would find myself cornered by two of the zombie things, not the werewolf, but the zombie things, and then a little face hugger's right there, too. And I'm like, all right, well, I'm dead. <laughs> but, yeah. So, I still haven't gotten that far. I haven't found the space suit. Apparently, you're supposed to find the space suit. I found the laptop. I haven't found the spacesuit, so we'll see. So was it more of like a jump scare game since you have these things coming at you and you can't see them? Or is it more like, all right, here's my mission. Here's my task. This is what I need to do. It looks like it's a combination of both because it's like you you have to find like notes or um, it'll give you like when you get past like if you get through a set of doors and you go into a next corridor or something it'll tell you okay now find this or now go get that uh, or to activate get the code for this armory so you could go to the armory and get whatever you need so there are like missions and focuses that you need to do so you're not just like wandering around killing shit but it definitely is a lot of jump scares and you know I think that it's called Shoot Your Nightmare. And I think that out of all the games I played, that one probably has the most potential. You can appreciate this, Lila. One of the other games I played was called Midnight Man. I think I've heard of that. Literally like the Midnight yeah. Man game from our Paranormal Games episode, but in a video game. Oh, wow. Okay. And it's very like, it's very cutesy animated. So like the character looks like a <laughs> Funko Pop almost. And it's a girl and she's got like a little backpack and she's in this house. The note you get when you first start it says that, you know, you've got to find the seven or no, it tells you the process of the Midnight Man game. Go to the front door, write your full right. name on a piece of paper, knock on the door 22 times and the Midnight Man is in. Now go find the seven letters hidden throughout the house and clear your sins. And I'm like, what? That's fucked. Okay. <laughs> There's something about like a cutesy horror game though that's just so fun because it's so like contradictory. I would love it. <laughs> I cuz I think that that's fun like the cartoony like styled games, like these animated styled like horror games because you don't expect them to be as scary because it's like is it is the term 8 bit or am I losing my mind? Is it something along those lines where it's like just pixelated horror yeah, games. Yeah, it's 8 bit, 16, yeah. whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And you don't expect them to be that scary, but those are the ones that I think surprise you the most. There's something twisted about you've got this cutesy girl at a house, but she's inviting the Midnight Man in, right? And clear your sins. Like, what sins does this that little girl character have? But the sins you're finding are actually on the letters that the seven deadly sins are listed. So, like, ironically enough, the only letter I can find in this game is lust. <laughs> Actually, send this game to me. I'm like, is this game trying to tell me something? 
<laughs> I'm going to send it to you. I can only find lust. And it's when you, like, the room is, um, because it's Midnight Man, she's got her candle. It's not like the whole building is lit up. It's wherever she's walking, she's got, like, a little circle around her, like a spotlight. So you're kind of seeing things as she does. Like, the, the room is normal, and it's like she finds a journal page, and, like, Timmy and Sarah went to get ice cream, and, oh, they had a great day. And it's like, all right, whatever that had to do with this. And then you find the envelope with lust. And as soon as you click on it and you see like lust is written in red and jaggedy, suddenly the walls in the room are covered in lust, in like blood, I assume. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, ooh, that's like some red rum going on there. I like mm. it. I'm so, into that. I'm stuck on lust, <laughs> but we'll see what else I find. <laughs> I'll send it to you, Lila, because, yeah, yeah you'll, you'll, it's, it's, you'll it's fun. It. She was telling me about it the other day, so. <laughs> That's super cool. And again, these are free. Like, these are free games that people, I'm assuming, are, like, maybe beta, beta testing or maybe even not even beta. Maybe they're just developing and trying to figure out what works, but it's pretty decent. So what I want to try, and, and Resident Evil 4 was actually one of my favorite ones, too, um, out of the whole series, but they have it in VR now. Nope. I, I kind of want to play it in VR, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> nope, that is a hard yeah. no for me. Yes. Yes. Some haptic sensors yes. on your head so when you get hit, exactly. taps yes. you, the whole thing. Yep. Mike seems Do like it. he would be all Do about it. that. For me, I'd probably run into a wall. <laughs> I've wanted to get... Uh, you know, try out VR and stuff. But yeah, like you said, like, you know, the space and the time and, and all that. So at, at the convention where Ashley and I met, uh, I did a VR thing. I did, um, Mike Hampton's VR thing, the guide to getting older. It was really neat. It was like crisp. Nothing went over your ears. They use the headphones that, uh, conduct the waves through your skull. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, so nothing was in your in your ears. It was just behind them, and then the headset, and it was like it was artistic. It was you know like like his comic, but it was really crisp and really accurate. Now, and the only time I'd done it before was 2017, on a different uh, setup at a film festival, and it wasn't nearly as good as what Mike had. So I was like, okay, it's time maybe I look into VR, and then it's like. Oh, Facebook sells the good... Ah, oh, crap. <laughs> you know, I don't want to support Facebook. So I'm just like... Mm. And then with the games, so it's my understanding that um, movement's still an issue. Like, you're limited in how much you can actually move, right? And so there was that product on Shark Tank where it's like a little uh, dish and you run in the dish. And then that's not a big success. So kids are still just sitting on the... Kids, adults, everybody's still sitting in a chair on the couch with the headset, right? Is that, isn't that what's happening? Pretty much, yeah. I know they're still testing different ones of like that dish to where you can walk and run. And then I know they're going to conventions and stuff with some of those mm. things still too. And then they have like the full body suits so you can have like your legs in VR and actually move around, stuff like that. Like, so it's not just a floating body kind yeah. of thing, so... Yeah, well, and I know too. We there was a studio here in Portland, and they set up a, a VR thing where it's interactive. Right. It's not video. It's not three sixty video. It's yeah. VR, so you can move within it a little bit. But they had to set up the poles with the cameras that then, when you get to actually hit a physical wall yeah. in your goggles, you get the red net. Yeah. You get like the you're about to hit something, and then oh. you you back off. Well, they're starting to make those um, retail spaces into the big VR games. Oh. There was a really big one that they put into the Mall of America in Minnesota. And then I saw one here, I believe, they keep announcing like a coming soon um, building and it shows the VR experience. I remember I'd stopped by the one in Minnesota and asked, like, because I saw you see in the window they have like the bodysuits. And like the cameras uh, mm. or the little helmets and stuff, the goggles. Um, and I asked, like, what's the age range for this? Because those look like pretty big suits. And they said, oh, it's it's all ages. Um, we have small suits. Wow. We have big suits. And I'm like, wow. And these games, like, at least from what I can see in the posters, I mean, these are like shoot 'em up games, like Call of Duty style games. So um, it's not horror, but I imagine horror is going to be coming soon. Oh, there's some in there. What better genre for VR than horror? I mean, you want to be scared? Actually, You're gonna go there. Yeah, there's actually quite a few games that are in there. There's a few where 
like there's this one that I can't remember the name of it, but I have it for my VR and you just walk around and you have to find these keys and you're basically in this big old maze and all these creatures jump up and come at you and I literally played it for five minutes and couldn't get very far because it was creepy as hell. I'm like, nope. And then my nephew played it and there's an app to where you can actually watch somebody on your phone or on the TV so you can hook it up so you can see what they're seeing. Yeah. And I was like, nope, I can't even do this. This is too creepy. So, yeah. Yeah, I think that horror is like a great avenue for that. And I'm surprised that there aren't like that there aren't more games for it, that there isn't much of a push for it at this time. Um, I think it's, like Ashley said, focused a lot on, like, shooter and action games, whereas, like, there are horror action games, but there's also so many other, like, genres and things that, like, you could be limiting yourself to, or we could just open up these possibilities and have all sorts of, you know, opportunities, like, Maybe, like, a stealth game or, like, a survival game would be great on a VR. Like, sneaking around yeah. while you're hiding away from goodness knows what. Like, that would be terrifying, and I'm into that. That sounds great. Yeah. But why? That's, like, where part of, like, when we, we talk about, like, the horror games and going into the VR experience. Like, the VR experience is the next step to, like, if this were real. Like, being actually in a horrible situation like that where people don't actually, it's not like people are, I think, who play these games that are like, man, I'm living for the zombie apocalypse. I can't wait for 30 zombies to chase me and want to eat my braids. Yeah, I'm so excited. Because it's like, let's get as close to it and immerse in it as possible without it being actually real. And so for me, it's like, what's the driving that? Adrenaline rush. Yeah, like we talked about that and like why people like horror. It's one thing to watch horror and be like the voyeur, right? It's not necessarily happening to you so you can experience it through somebody else's bad decisions or, you know, mortality. But when it's like... Right. Now you're the driver. You're talking about crossing that line and making it making it you. And it's, you're going third person to first person, basically. Right. Yes. And so, like, what drives that transition from third person to, to first? Yeah. Is it just that thrill of danger, experiencing danger in, like, that controlled environment? Is that – I don't know. I, I've been curious about that. I think that's exactly it. What, what, what would be your reason? What would be your reason? All of you. What would be your reason to try it? The idea of VR terrifies me. <laughs> VR in a horror world. I don't think I want to try that because to me that's too anxiety inducing. So for you, so for you, it's like how hot of hot sauce can I put on my chicken wings before <laughs> I die? You know what I mean? Like you're just putting your toe in the pool and like, oh, that's that's too hot. That's going to give me <laughs> diarrhea. I'm backing off of there. I'm not doing that, right? Oh my god. <laughs> what a weird comparison. So you're just like slowly No, no, it's totally accurate, trust me. You just you're Is just slowly you you're just slowly seeing how far games? you can go then and you're you you, you, you totally yes. Yes. And then, uh, so you're just, uh, you're, you're just, uh, testing to see how far you can go, but you suspect that you can't go that far, right? That's like your gut, your gut intuition at this point. Yeah. I think being first person is where I draw the line, but it, maybe that's because I, I know how I react yeah. in other environments that simulate something similar to that with like haunted houses. I was just going to say that. I don't do well with Halloween haunted houses. So the idea of like a horror game putting me in that same position, even though yeah, logically I know it's not real, my body's going to react viscerally, right? And it's going to be nope. Yeah. Yeah. So for me, I don't. Now, Ashley, I think I think that you like hit the nail on the head there by saying like, why subject ourselves to VR, why subject ourselves to horror is like the anxiety in a controlled environment. I think that that's exactly correct. That danger. Mm. Yeah, it's the like, like I said earlier, the adrenaline rush, the anxiety, the like, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm terrified. But if I die, I'm not actually going to die. So it's fine. Everything's okay. Because I can walk out of this even though my character can't. My character's gone. She's yeah. plastered on the right. wall. It's fine, but I'm still here. Good way to test your limits, I think, too. Like I said, because I couldn't get very far in that VR game at all. I'm like, nah, I'm good. Like, nope, this is too freaky. Good thing it was only like four bucks. So, uh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You have an iconic voice. And so 
you did the Scream series uh, for both seasons, right? Mm. And you have that iconic voice. Not going to lie. I was just watching it. Um. <laughs> you were watching it? Why? Yes, again. Oh my God. He Thank said again. you. Because it was a good show. Yes. The, the show itself wasn't great, but I'm a big Scream fan. And you did obviously fantastic with the voice. And I freaking loved it. So thanks. <laughs> I that was that was one of my favorite jobs of all time. Most of the games I really like doing. Um, they're hard to do; they're challenged, but I, I like doing them. But Scream was like nice. by far one of my favorite projects. And before that, I had done a Spider-Man game, and I thought this is the end of my career. This is the peak. This is it. It's all downhill right. from here. <laughs> and then you book another thing, and you're like, okay, this is I Scream. This is absolutely it. I'm never working fucking again. This is it. This is the height of my career. And then. <laughs> now I'm on Cyber News. Hey, all right. It's, Which uh, Spider-Man game did you do? Web of Shadows. Well, I'm in. I'm in Web of Shadows. I'm also nice. in the current one, but I play a bunch of thugs. And you're just um, you're doing it remotely, right? No, that one, the Spider-Man I did in person, because um, these games take a long time to come out, and when you're working on them, most of them, you have no idea what you're working on. I had no idea. I was on the recent Call of Duty. I had no idea. They, it's all code named and all that. I was on Final Fantasy Type Zero, and they called it uh, Yellow P. So I went to Yellow P sessions. <laughs> I was like, "What is?" This? And they don't tell you, and the whole thing. Um, and I did a four or five year run for Final Fantasy Mobius. Yeah. It was their mobile game that went crazy. That was fun. And I my character died twice, and they kept bringing me back. I was like, "This is nuts." Games are so fun, and the people that that direct you and put them together are so. I haven't, I have, I had one bad video game experience, and let me tell you, it was not anywhere near a top title. So, if you guys um, could create a horror video game based on an existing horror world, whether it be a book or a movie, what would you pick? Mm. I think for me, and. Mike, even though it was the wrong game title, struck like a, a brain nerve. Talking about Last of Us, I am so in love with that game. Yes. Those two games, you know, the, the prequel, everything. I yes. love the story. I love the so world good. that was built around it. And I think it's just so fantastic because I feel like it also just combines these different elements of horror games. You have survival where you don't really have a whole lot of resources. You have to be so careful not to waste any bullets. You have like the stealth aspects where you're sneaking around and dodging and throwing glass bottles to get the clickers away from you. And then you've got like the action of it. And I think it just has a really great story. And also it's just beautiful. Like the settings are amazing. And I think it's just very, very visually appealing to look at. I don't know what like, I would create in that universe going, you know, back to Ashley's question, but I just think that while we're talking about different game worlds, like that one is the one that sticks out the most to me. It's it's more than just a horror game, it's more than like a shooting game. It's it's its own story and I just think that it's amazing. Yeah, that is a good one. Yeah, I think that's where a lot of the video games are going these days, being more of a cinematic, putting you in the movie experience. Mm -hmm. So you're living a movie, basically. Mm -hmm. By providing that, I think that helps you be more in the experience. Yeah. Right? Like, versus just quick running around, doing missions, and that's it. By providing the scenes and the extended, you know, dialogue and all of those enhancements, I think it does, it makes it something you can go from third to first mm -hmm. person a little bit more. I cried during the first one. No. I cried during I cried the second one. in the first one. like ten minutes, yeah. so I don't. Know I I cried during Left Behind. I'm I'm getting ready to cry with you talking about it. <laughs> I think that's where the cinematic stories in the games help um, create more of the experience because exactly that the emotional connection by having you care about the characters, you know their origins, you know what drives mm -hmm. them, their quirks, their strengths, all that stuff, you connect. So then when it's like, boom, they died, or oh my gosh, they're at risk, you got to save them, hurry up. It's like, oh my God, I can't let them die, I love yeah. them. Yeah. I'm forgetting, like it's a character, but... Um, You're invested. Yeah, I, You're invested. Yeah, you are so invested. Yep. And especially when it's a child. Especially when it's a child. But I think Left Behind also did something really good with that, too. And having that dynamic between Ellie and, was it Riley? 
his other character's name? Anyway. I don't know. I don't remember. It's I haven't played Riley. I haven't that far yet. So this was like safe. before the first game, um, and it was like their little spinoff where Ellie and her friend are going to the mall and they're hanging out. And, you know, at this age, they were born into this world where there were already clickers and there were already these undead. And, and this is the world that they grew up in. And this is how Ellie found out that she was immune, is that the two of them got bit together. And that's pretty much where the story ends, is they're like, we're going to ride this out together, we're going to just deal with it together. And Ellie makes it through, and obviously Riley does not. Um, and that plays into going into the first one. So it's kind of the story set up. And that one was emotional, too, because you're getting this connection between the two characters and seeing their friendship and all of a sudden it's gone, you know, and that's, that's it. And I think that, yes, it is a horror game, but there's so much more to it. And I could really just, I could ramble on about this forever if someone does not stop me. <laughs> I mean, it's already halfway there. It's a game, so it's already halfway to VR. So it's right. like, okay, what can, you know, mm -hmm. now, now you got to add the movement and all that. So you're going to have to put it out in a big giant forest somewhere. That's going to get dangerous. I do have a question, though, for Mike. Because um, you look into the kind of theories behind some of this stuff, why people do what they do. And I, I do wonder, when we take it from third person to first person, we put mm -hmm. ourselves in that VR mode, and we're putting ourselves in these situations, are we potentially causing traumas? Are we potentially causing tr like triggers within ourselves? Trauma can occur by staying Horror, like horrifying, alarming things that we create the association. I saw that my heart went Psh, and I felt completely paralyzed for a moment. Trauma can occur in those moments. Mm -hmm. and the interesting thing, when you talk to people that test VR sets, a lot of people have said, oh my God, I forgot I was wearing the headset. Like they get so into it, they forgot that hey, I've got, I've got a headset. So they're that into it. Now with that said, I know people don't like that challenge because then it's like well where are you going with this you want to censor it absolutely not no i think no, it's no. a free world and if i want to scare the shit out of myself and traumatize myself by all means i'm just curious if traumas can occur by that so what's what's the difference what's the difference to you between what we have now because the games we've been talking about are in first person it's just not surrounding our eyes and our ears as well all the games we talked about are in first person. Because full immersion can't quite happen. Ah. It could to an extent, to an extent if someone gets lost in it, but full immersion. Okay. Because, yeah, because you are now versus doing like the joysticks. There's like those distances that it's not truly the first person, but full immersion. I've got the sounds. I've got the shock um, effects, the, uh, depending what you're wearing, because I know the full suits, they'll actually like simulate the, yeah, the shots, hits. The yeah, yeah. 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 And like, and I've got like the, the pretend gun in my hand. So I'm feeling it. It's like, I am immersed. And so now it's become so real. My gut, my gut says no difference. And it's, it's a just of medium from what we have now. Um, but could be wrong. And it, it may be based on the individual, right? Kind of like alcohol. Oh, some people are thousand subjected percent to individual. like alcoholism. Some people are not. So it may be just the individual be, would be like susceptible to something, whether it's a game or whatever. But I, I am curious how that's going to impact people. It would. If there, I'm. I'm sure there will be a study if if VR really takes a foothold and we find ourselves doing VR on the daily. I'm sure there'll be a study to. You know, and there'll be um, statistics strewn about to benefit, you know, each organization's different viewpoint. I mean, that's the rule of statistics, bend the numbers to your liking. So that'll be interesting to see. I, I hear what you're saying. My, my gut says, nah, we're just stepping up the technology that we currently have. Yeah, because I just think of like the body's receptors don't always know what's like we discussed earlier, what's real, what's not. Even though we mentally know our body yeah. reactions don't always connect, especially the more frightened we are or the more the adrenaline kicks in. Because even with the, those dopey haunted houses, right? Like, you know it's not real, but people, there are people who will freeze up and start crying and yeah. piss themselves. So to them, they are truly in a terror state that 
causes some issues. Um, or those haunted Does it? Have, has anybody left ha- ha- Halloween Horror Nights and, and uh, had long-term... Like, I honestly don't know. I honestly don't know. Have, has somebody done those horror houses and, like, had long-term consequences? Well, there. I don't know if it's long-term, but there have been people that have done the, like, the full contact haunted houses that end up yeah. needing, like, therapy and psychiatric care. Well, there you go. So, yeah. but, but that's full contact, though. And so that's, to me, they are choking you and they are tying you up and they are so... You know it's not real and they can't actually kill you, but when you're being tied up and you're being choked and you're having stuff done to you, it's like your body just disconnects from the mind. That's a great that's a great point. I didn't think about that. Yeah, yeah. That I mean they have rules at most haunted houses. You can't they can't actually touch you and they've got emergency outs all over the place. Yeah, the full contact houses where they touch you and do all that, you have to sign yeah, a waiver. Like a forty like page. A it's a forty like page anything. waiver and it's, it's a, a forty, 40 page, page waiver. Yeah. You have to go through a psych evaluation before you do it on some yep. of them. And still And if you sue them for psychiatric care after you, you signed your way yeah. like you can't. And maybe that's what I think of. I like what I'm kind of Making it akin to in my brain when I start. Right, to I see. It. I see like what you're the saying. Full yeah, contact with the the immersion. Yeah, but I'm still of the mindset. No matter what, that is not a censorship thing. If people choose to, right. they want that. That's, no, I knew. I knew you weren't going there. That's a person's choice. And do you know what's going to happen? You're going to put on your VR headset, and you're going to have to go through a forty page <laughs> disclaimer. <laughs> like oh. you're. God, Damn it, I can't get the page to move. Where's my virtual pen? As you know, in the entertainment industry, all it takes is one lawsuit. <laughs> yeah. All it takes yep. is one. And then it's going to be signed that 40 page waiver. Yeah. I want to go back to your first question, though, when you asked about the games. I actually want to see Rob Zombie do a video, a horror game. That'd his awesome. art is amazing. Throw his music in yeah. there. Um, fun fact, though. Back in the PlayStation days, there were these games called Nightmare Creatures 1 and 2. And Rob Zombie, um, for the second one, his solo album had just come out. It was his debut solo album. And his songs were all in the cutscenes, which was just absolutely amazing. And it made me love the game even more because I didn't really listen to that music back then. I had friends that did. But it immersed me in the game more. And I was just like, oh, hell yeah, I love this. This is great. So I definitely want to see Rob Zombie do a game. That would be sweet. That would be cool. <laughs> About you, Ashley. Uh, a Hellraiser game? Yes. Of course. Yes. <laughs> it could be like, but it could be like uh, for me, because this is where I go, because I'm fucked like that. Um, psychology this, Mike. Um, I think it would be cool to have a cross between a um, horror and like a dark erotic game. I think that would be kind of interesting to mix those worlds like Hellraiser did, but make it into a, a game. That's awesome. You said that, and I, all I could see was uh, spending an hour trying to solve the cube <laughs> exactly. puzzle to get it to open. Like, fuck, fuck. I ended up throwing fuck. it across the wall. It's a like, strategy. Just, oh, but you could, but you could solve the puzzle on your iPad. It's a str- and strategy then, and to then, get it open. Yeah, exactly. That's what she said. I got two. Um, all right, let's and hear. one one was actually pitched to me. By a fan or developer, I don't know. I got hit with, hey, we're doing a Scream video game. Do you want to be in it? I'm like, yes, here's my agent's number. (laughs) Go there. Don't bug me about this. Yeah, because I don't believe believe you, first of all, because, you know, we'll see. Apparently, it did did get pretty far. But if there was to be a Scream uh, game, I would like it to be in VR, and I'd like you to choose who you are. Do you, you know, it's cat and mouse, and you got to, you got to do that and set up traps beforehand and all that. So, you know, kind of a, um, uh, it's like Jumanji, like a, like a, like deathmatch, like multiplayer deathmatch sort of thing. But, but yeah. And then you can design your own masks and, and all that stuff. So, you know, and then, and then you can pick classic mask and it's Roger Jackson and you can pick screams two seasons my yeah. voice and then you can pick the next one the new whoever else is going to do it next so who knows the second game i would make is based because i get asked what's my favorite horror movie and i won't watch it again for fear that it doesn't hold up but it's it's george c scott in the changeling not the angelina Ooh. jolie one yeah. this mm-hmm. is like from the 70s or something yeah, yeah i don't remember much about the film other than the overall plot and that ball that red ball coming down the <laughs> stairs <laughs> Crap my pants, and then and then American Horror Story did the ball 
in the basement down the stairs, kind of homage to yeah. it, you know, and I shit my pants once again, and I was like, oh my God. <laughs> but my idea for the, the Changeling one is, okay, yeah, the kid's in the, the sorry, spoiler alert, <laughs> kid's in the attic haunting the house, George C. Scott can't do it. But this is where the game starts, is when he has to sell the house and the horrors of going through a realtor and putting it on the market and <laughs> explaining that a kid was in the attic and people going, ah, shit, I don't know. I got, I feel the vibe in this place. I don't know. And they walk out and you got to like chase after him with your VR headset on, you know, like, no, 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 we'll, we'll knock off a percentage point, you know. That's and the new video that's game, the is horror. sell the haunted house. Right, 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 right. And if you, and if you wait too long and interest rates go up, you got no offers, you know, like, no. Oh got, yeah, yeah, and you pick the wrong, hilarious. pick the wrong agents. Oh fuck this! And then you sell it, and now you got taxes. So that's this. <laughs> you got this taxes. is horror. This it's is horror. never ending. This is a horror game. Yes, yes. I would like to see a From Dust Till Dawn game. Oh, that's that good would be idea. like a cool shooter style that one, I guess. Cool. Or stick them. Why haven't they done that? That seems I like don't know. a I think that, that seems like a duh duh moment. All right. I got one more thing. One more thing before we wrap up. So in my research, as we all know, they did a bunch of horror games like based on movies for the Nintendo and all of that. But I didn't realize that they had a Halloween game for the Atari back in 83. I didn't know that either. No. And I, there's actually a YouTube video for it. It's for the Atari 2600. And it's got the music when Michael Myers is chasing. It's, it's so – it was – what? It was actually really cool to watch. Obviously, it's the Atari, so it's not great, but it was pretty cool to see. So definitely recommend checking that out. Or the ultimate horror game of all time, E.T. Oh, God, yes. That is yes. just a horrible, that horrible That game was mess. bad. Can't get out of that pit. Yes. All right, final thoughts. Any last final thoughts? Those are all my last final thoughts. Those are all mine. Lila? Ooh, yeah. Um, I think... Moral of the story is that there's a game out there for everyone. With horror being as expansive as it is, you have all of these different genres or subgenres. Like we talked about zombies, we talked about like face grabbers and werewolves. So you've got all these monster games, but you also have these psychological thrillers and you've got jump scare games, which I feel like are really big right now. Talking more like Five Nights at Freddy's, those type of games. Like you have all sorts of genres so I think whether you play games or you watch them like there's something out there for everyone and I think that that's what's so fascinating about like the horror genre in general is that you're not limited so I think that's pretty cool and I feel like we all have our own like different perspectives and we all have our own different preferences on what we like to play and don't like to play it's kind of cool to see and kind of cool to talk about and hear where y'all are at with that Right on. Yeah. I think it like we said that with the horror movies too. If you want to do it, if it's like I want a game, I want to do a horror game or I want to watch a horror movie, like there's something out there for everybody. Mm. So what are you into? And sometimes it's just trying it out, but the gaming can be expensive. We all know that. System consoles are expensive, games are expensive. So versus going out and buying every single thing, like ask your friends, um, go Go try out their games, but also check your area because, like, here they actually have like gaming restaurants where, like, you could go eat mm. and then there's different consoles set up at every station. You can play different games, see what, what they've got. If you want to play, go out and find it, it's there. There's a whole world awaiting you. And as someone who makes beer money from this industry, no, buy all the games. <laughs> oh yes, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Buy all Kidding. the games. If you if you look up Mike on IMDb, all the games that he's a part of, buy those. <laughs> buy them all. That's it. That's yes. It. yes. <laughs> That's really funny. No, no. Spend your money wisely, kids. Spend it wisely. He's forced to that out, and it was so not real. He's like, spend it wisely on me. Spend it wisely. Spend it wisely. <laughs> Any last thoughts for you, Mike? I got nothing. This was fun. Thanks. Right. Thank Thanks. you for coming on. Anytime. Yes, thank you. Anytime. If people want to find out more about you or, you know, reach out, where where can they find you? Um, I would like everybody to subscribe to me on Instagram. So then when I get a video game audition and it goes to the client, they go, he has how many followers? Oh, okay, cool. Let's book him. Um, it's the underscore Mike underscore Vaughn. And, uh, I try to post funny stuff and I interact with every 
almost everybody. Yeah, you're pretty good with your social media. I'm terrible at it. I need to hire somebody <laughs> to do it. I'm actually terrible at it. If anybody out there wants to run my social media, I will pay you. I'm done. Oh my I'm done gosh. with this shit. I'm done. <laughs> you're going to get Fair your enough. inbox flooded <laughs> now. IMDB me, because the meter goes up. It, IMDB.me slash Mike Vaughn, or just yeah, uh, look me up Mike Vaughn on IMDB. That would be huge favor if people did that. That'd be awesome. I love IMDB. That's my go-to for a lot. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> full of good information. It's great. Like, that's how you got your phone number. Uh, what? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> He made an Ashley face. That was funny. He, he was did. Like, that was what? good. I got you. Well, thank you for coming on, Mike. Anytime. I appreciate you. And uh, we appreciate you taking your night to do this, especially on a yes, holiday weekend. You. So thank you. Yeah. Thanks to you guys for breaking up your holiday weekend to put up with my crap. <laughs> well. Anytime. I thank you so much for coming on. And thank you, Lila. You're amazing as well. Anytime. All right, Daddy John, bring us home. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody. And thank you, Mike. And again, thank you, Lila, for coming on. I appreciate you both. And thank you to all of our listeners for tuning into this episode of Three Haunted Podcast with your host. I'm John Thomas. I am Ashley Lunar Goddess. And if you have any questions, comments, or episode suggestions, please feel free to email us at three haunted podcast at gmail.com. And like we ask always, if you haven't done so already, please like, follow, and subscribe to all of our social media. You don't want to miss one crazy moment. Until next time. And you're not even the hungover one. I know, right? He's just the hung one.